Welcome to Peace Online Worship, May 10th, 2020. It's the easiest way to invite your friends to church because you can stream anytime. We've got Jen, Brendan, Rose here to give you your announcements. Thanks for joining us. Please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe to our Facebook and YouTube channels. We love to read your comments. It's the best way to share Peace Church with others. We got a new website and online giving. There's a tutorial posted on the Facebook page and the YouTube channel in case you need some help navigating. Please visit us today at peaceshano.org. Picture page is happening this week. Check our Facebook page on Monday for the picture post and post pictures of your family and show us what you've been doing safer at home. We'll put together a collage for next week's service. We miss you. We are starting a Peace Church prayer chain. If you are interested in praying for others in our Peace Church family and friend circle, please contact Pastor Lou. His contact information is on the screen. There's no love life this week. Please watch our Facebook page for further updates. One last announcement. Please make sure that you join us next week as we have a very special message coming from our denomination, the United Church of Christ. It will be a really special service, and we hope that you'll join us next week here at Peace Online Worship. Enjoy the rest of the service. Thanks, ladies. You guys did a great job on the announcements. Now, will you please join me as we enter into worship? If you're going to prepare a place for me, why don't I take your hand? Let's try that one more time. Here we go. If you're going to prepare a place for me, why don't I take your hand and let you take the lead? Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. If you've got a guide You might think you're lost But you're never out of sight So pick your path and find your way Let's get out of here You're never out of sight, so pick your path and find your way.
to prepare a place for me why don't i take your hand Mother's Day from Peace Church. We know that many times being a mom is a very complicated, difficult, confusing thing. The maternal energy and power comes in lots of different forms and in lots of different ways. Some of us are mothers naturally. Some of us are mothers in a complicated fashion. Some of us have great moms. Some of us have moms that are maybe a little more challenging than others. Some of us want to be moms and we just haven't been able to be moms to our own children, but we're moms to other people's kids. There's so many ways that you can be a mom to a young person, to a grown person, to any person. Moms are important. That nurturing, that caring, that loving that moms have, it's not just tied to somebody who is technically a mother. It's something that each of us can embrace. It's something that each of us can cultivate within ourselves if we so wish to. So to all of you out there who are moms in a very traditional or non-traditional sense, we wanna say happy Mother's Day. And for those of you that struggle with this day, this day carries a little bit of angst, a little bit of sadness, a little bit of mournfulness, we just want to say that we understand, we feel you, we're with you, we carry you, we support you today. Whatever you're celebrating, or even if you're mourning, we are with you today. Happy Mother's Day. We have a special treat this week with John Myers sharing a very special story with us. Please enjoy. Good morning. I hope this finds you healthy and in good spirits. Patty and I are doing great. Uh, we've been doing a lot of cooking, a lot of walking, a lot of FaceTiming with our grandchildren, and lots of projects around the house to keep us busy. In fact, 10 years from now, when someone asks us what we were doing during the pandemic of 2020, I can safely say that we've resurrected our love of reading, uh, a hobby and a pastime that I have sorely neglected over the last few years. Speaking of reading, I just recently finished a novel. It's called Beneath a Scarlet Sky. And it has to do with a young Italian man named Pino Leila, who grew to adulthood in 1943, war-torn Italy. Now, Pino grew up in Milan, uh, one of two brothers in a very loving family, wanting for nothing until the Nazis attacked and began terrorizing the city. That was when his father decided that he felt it was too dangerous for his boys to be, remain in Milan, and he sent them to safety in a monastery high in the Alps. Ironically, however, Pino, this young man of 17, is drawn into the war by joining an underground railroad charged with safely delivering Jewish families high over the Alps in a very treacherous trip to the, into the safety of Switzerland and out of the grip of the Nazis. Now, Pino could have chosen to stay in safety 
and ride out the war in the safety of that monastery. But he actually decided to accept his fate and he marched into the battle head on. Now, just as God led his chosen people out of the desert thousands of years ago, Pino was now following God's plan and saving hundreds of families and future generations from certain internment in concentration camps, and as we know, worse. God had a plan for his people in the desert those many years ago, and he also had a plan for Pino in 1943. Pino Leila went on to make many successful trips over the Alps and saved many families. And he also went on to have a very, very exciting life. Well, it's all in the book. As I read, as I read about Pino and his extraordinary life, I couldn't help but make the correlation to our current situation. Now, I'm not gonna compare the cores of the Holocaust to COVID-19, but I do feel that God is the common thread between the events in the desert thousands of years ago, Pino Leila in 1943, and our current pandemic. We've all heard stories of bravery and kindness over the last few months. I personally know of someone in our congregation who at the risk of her own health has been delivering groceries to our vulnerable shut-ins and making sure that they're warm and safe. And what about our courageous nurses and doctors and first responders? Like Pino, they are marching directly into the battle and doing the good of God, and certainly at the risk of their, very, their health and their very own lives. Is this God's plan for these brave men and women? I'm not sure, I don't know. But I do know, and I'm very confident in saying that these brave men and women had no idea how their skills and their stress levels would be maximized in the first few months of 2020. What I do know in my heart is that God will take us through this dark time. As for Patty and myself, we will continue to do what we can for our family, our neighbors, and our friends, and we're gonna let God do the heavy lifting. To repeat the words of Isaiah, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you go through the river, it will not overwhelm you. Keep the faith, my friends, and stay optimistic because God is good, God loves you, and God has a plan. So until we meet again, take care, and God bless. Will you please join us for the prayer of the people, followed by the Lord's Prayer. God of all peace, quiet our hearts when we are troubled. Inspire our hearts when we are bored. Sensitize our hearts when we are unconcerned. Strengthen our hearts when we are weak. Forgive our hearts when we are dominated by passions that diminish who we are, who others are, or what your creation is. Bless us to serve. Enrich us to love. Comfort us to live. Accept the praise we offer to you as we approach your majestic presence. together yet not together. Teach us to pray always. Teach us to pray as a way of being. And teach us to pray in the Spirit as we recite in unison your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, please, Enjoy this scripture reading with Mike Melton as he shares the good news from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. The reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, where Jesus addresses the disciples at the Last Supper. Set your troubled hearts at rest. Trust in God always. Trust also in me. There are many dwelling places in my Father's house. If it were not so, I should have told you, for I am going there on purpose to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I shall come again and receive you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also, and my way there is known to you. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus replied, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. If you knew me, you would know my Father too. From now on, you do know him, you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we ask no more. Jesus answered, Have I been all this time with you, Philip? And you still do not know me? Any who has seen me has seen the Father. Then how can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? I am not myself the source of the words I speak to you. It is the Father who dwells in me, doing his own work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else accept the evidence of the deeds themselves. In truth, in very truth, I tell you, he who has faith in me will do what I am doing, and he will do greater things still, because I am going to the Father. Indeed, anything you ask in my name, I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. This ends the Gospel reading. Lord, grant us the wisdom to understand these ancient scriptures. Amen. And now, Pastor Lou with Let's Get Out of Here. Anytime you begin talking to somebody and the first thing you say is don't, you know there's potential for a problem. When I was in high school, a friend of mine and I had gone to a drive-in food place to get a bite to eat, and a few cars down from us, there was a car full of youths who apparently had become quite intoxicated, and they started yelling obscenities at us. So I said, let's get out of here. So we left. I started driving away, but noticed that they were following us, and they were throwing things at us. So I decided to drive away a little faster. And we were going uh, faster and not pulling away. They were following us. This was on a two-lane road, and I was trying to pass in areas that was not safe for me to pass in. And in my defense now, I was frightened. I was scared to death and you know because I didn't know what they might do. And so I went even faster and I panicked, but I was looking for a place that I could pull off that looked safe to me, a place with lights and people around. And finally I found a place, it was a gas station, I pulled off and they quit following us. But I was still panicking, my heart was racing. I went in to uh, inside the gas station and there was a payphone there. Now, for those of you that don't remember or aren't old enough to have a memory of it, pay phones were cell phones back in the day. They were bigger, they were anchored down, they cost money, but they had the distinct advantage of actually working. Well, I got into the gas station and I called my mom. And in a very panicked and breathless voice, I said, Mom, don't worry, but... Clearly, the words I used did not help ease her worry. And in fact, they were just screaming, the sky is falling. So don't start a conversation with don't unless there's a real problem. Don't, your nap. don't go near that edge. Don't touch that wire. Don't drink the water. In today's passage, Jesus begins the conversation with, don't. And you know we're in real trouble. And we are, right? Just like now, the disciples he was with were in a bad place. And so he says, don't worry. Later on in the passage, he actually concludes this whole thing by saying, let's get out of here. He wanted to take them to a better place. And so he describes this place and he says, I'm going to go ahead to prepare a place for you. 
And, you know, as far as I know, he's still gone. It's been a long time. Maybe he's using the same contractors to prepare the plays that we've used. It can take a while. But he does begin with words that we all desperately need to hear. Don't let your hearts be troubled. And the picture he describes, he says that there's plenty of room in God's presence for everybody. There's room for all of us. Amen? That's it. But the story doesn't end there. I love the way that Thomas and Philip misunderstand what Jesus is trying to communicate. And they're so much like us. You see, when Thomas says, hey, we don't know how to get there. We don't have GPS. You're not going to be with us. What do we do? He's really stating a misunderstanding of what the issue really is. And then when Philip says, just show us the Father, God, he's really expressing a misunderstanding of what the nature of the solution is. It's just like us. You see, we often understand what the nature of the real problem is. Now, I don't want to downplay the awful nature of this pandemic. It's affecting all of us. It's affecting our finances. It's affecting our sense of mental well-being. It's affecting lives. Some people I know have lost loved ones. But this does not have to define us, either as individuals or as a society or as a church family. You see, the real issue in our lives the thing that defines who we are is really a spiritual issue. Now, when I say that, I do not mean to discount the need many of us have for professional mental health care. It is May, it's Mental Health Month. And let me just say, if you need help, get help. And then we can all celebrate the struggle in the healing process together. But I know a lot of mentally healthy people who are selfish, who are rude, who don't see a grand purpose to their lives. So what do I mean when I say that it's really a spiritual issue? Well, let me ask you this. How do you maintain your sense of purpose through all of this? How do you experience contentment even without access to life's normal stuff? How do you enjoy the beauty of the people that are around you? And how do you envision the next chapter of your life? These are spiritual issues. If Thomas is like us in that he misunderstands what the issue is, Philip is like us in that he misunderstands the solution because he says, Jesus just Give us something other than what we have now. I mean, he's been hanging out with Jesus for a long time and doesn't get it yet. He just wants something else or something more. And that's the way a lot of us build our lives. Our desire for something else rears its head in the constant desire for new and improved. That's how advertising is so effective. We're always looking for that something else, something different. In fact, I think it's a huge component of why people who are unhappy in their marriages or in their lives with their spouses seek someone else. They want something else other than what they have. Our desire for something more is the very thing that motivates a lot of people, especially folks with ambition. At one point in the turn of the 20th century, John D. Rockefeller was the wealthiest man in the world. In fact, adjusted for inflation, he was richer then to the equivalent of Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates or Warren Buffett or Larry Ellison or Mark Zuckerberg. He was rich. In an interview, a reporter asked him, how much is enough? And he responded this famous line, just a little bit more. There's a little bit of that Rockefeller and all of us, though, I think, if only I could have this, 
if only I could remodel the bathroom, I would be happy. If only I could achieve today's goals, I'd be satisfied. I read of a study that compared the happiness level of the richest people on the uh, Forbes 400 list with some of the uh, poorest communities in the world, such as the Inuit of Northern Greenland, who have neither running water nor electricity and found out that their happiness is really no different. Being motivated is really not the problem and being successful is really not the solution. Go ahead, make your plans, improve your life, achieve your goals, but if you expect that to give you happiness, it doesn't work that way. St. Paul writes to the church in Philippi, I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I have experienced need and I have experienced plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything in him who gives me strength. And then he writes later that my God will meet all your needs according to the glorious, glorious riches in Christ Jesus. We all have this desire to get out of here. And we all have, through Christ, the way to get us there. Amen. We're adding something new this week to our online worship experience. It's a little segment called Praise Through Gifts. We would love for you to pray with us, meditate with us, go online and give if you so choose, or just worship with us through this time. It is our blessing to serve and our joy to be in fellowship with you.
God, thank you that during this time we are physically apart. You are present with each of us. Thank you for sustaining us. Thank you for blessing us so that we can be a blessing to those in our households and beyond. Thank you for the gifts we have received. As we have received, so let us give our gifts joyfully to one another. Amen. Let's try that one more time. Here we go. If you're going to prepare a place for me, why don't I take your hand and let you take the lead? Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. When you've got a guiding light It's even easier if you've got a guide You might think you're lost But you're never out of sight So pick your path and find your way Let's get out of here You're never out of sight So pick your path and find your way Take your hand and let you take